Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Welcome to you who are here in this beautiful sanctuary at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Kerry. And welcome also to you who are worshiping with us on YouTube or on Facebook out there or in the internet land. Uh, we are ready for worship. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, which is the end of the Easter season. That means next week is Pentecost. Um, so we transition today from one season to the other. I'm Pastor Wolfgang, and it is my privilege to lead you in worship and bring you the word. With me today is a new person that I want to introduce. This is Avery Johnson. Avery is a student at Duke Divinity School, um, so she's a seminarian. She just finished her first year there, and she's now doing her summer internship. And lucky for us, she's doing it with us. She'll be with us for 10 weeks, I think, or 11 or whatever. And so she'll be here through the beginning of August, and you'll see more of her as she learns how to be a pastor and gets to try out some of the things that she has learned in um, school. She's from Iowa. She's part of the ELCA, and her goal is to be an ELCA pastor after she graduates from Duke. So welcome, Avery. We are so glad that you're here, and we're looking forward to working with you. If you're visiting with us, uh, if this is your first time, we would invite you, if you're in the room, to leave us a phone number or an email on the friendship pads that are at the end of each of the rows. Uh, if you are at home today, please text CTK Kerry to 94000, and then one of us pastors will get in touch with you. Uh, I want to say one word about our new COVID regulations. We've had to tighten up a little bit because COVID cases are going up again. Wake County is now in the medium risk category because of the rising numbers. So we really appreciate you wearing a mask while you're here at worship. The CDC, as you know, does recommend that we be masked when we are in larger groups. And while we don't have overwhelming attendance today on this Memorial Day weekend, uh, this is a larger group as the CDC would uh, define it. So thank you for that. We've also had to suspend food service in the building. There were a couple cases of people testing positive following our Wednesday night dinners. They're still happening, but they will, they'll be happening outside. And today after church, you're invited to, for fellowship and coffee, but it's outside in the prayer garden. And it's a beautiful day. So we are actually looking forward to uh, connecting with you during the coffee hour today. All right, I think we are ready, and because it's the Easter season, for the last time, we are going to give a thanks for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness, so we now give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us, us as beloved children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life that we have in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our life with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We will now share the peace that God brings us in whatever way you are comfortable. Remember to uh, point to the camera and to wave and to say peace to our friends online. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. God bless you. Peace be with you, choir. Peace. Peace. Our gathering hymn is number 655, Son of God, Eternal Savior 655.
people of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found in your Son Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to the readings from Holy Scripture. The first reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had bought, brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews, and they are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. 
About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and you, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. This is the word of the Lord. Sorry. We will read Psalm 97 responsively. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. While the darkness surround the Lord, righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Find years in his land, and the cities of Judah rejoice, because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate the evil. God guards the lives of the saints. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. The second reading is from the 22nd chapter of Revelation. See, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, Let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the gospel. People of God, the holy gospel for you according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them 
even if you have loved me. Father, I desire all those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know, know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This, siblings in Christ, is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please have a seat. It's time for the children's message. Are there any young people in the house that would like to come up? If not, I'm sure there are some at home, so come a little closer to the TV screen because we want to talk about something important today. And I have to admit to you, I was struggling all week how to do a children's sermon after a week like this. I mean, the mass shooting in Texas just has been hanging over this week. How do you talk to kids and what do you say about a week like that? And so I've been wondering all week. And then my son, Josef, uh, as you know, he has intellectual and de developmental disabilities and is often childlike. He had a very wise thing he said. He says, well, just talk about love and peace and hope. Love and peace and hope. Those are the three things we talk about as followers of Jesus, even in the middle of the greatest tragedy, right? Because we serve a God who brings us love and peace and hope. The, the gospel reading for today is all about how Jesus is praying for us, his followers, so that we would have that love of God in us that he himself has experienced as the Son of God. That's what the gospel lesson is about. So I thought I would teach you a song um, and since I don't have kids here, you have to help sing with me, say, okay? Uh, it's called Love, Love, Love. Maybe you know it. We've sung it before, and it's been a, a staple in vacation Bible schools for many years, and it goes like this. Love, 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 that's what it's all about. Cause God has loved, we love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother, everybody sing and shout. Cause that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. All right, you got it? All right, we're going to sing it one more time. And you at home, sing it loud so we can hear it down here, okay? <laughs> sing it to the TV screen. Here we go. Love, love, that's what it's all about, that's what it's all about, cause God has, God has loved, we love each other, mother, father, sister, brother, everybody, shout, cause that's what it's all about, it's about love, 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 it's about love, love. All right, can we pray? And it's a repeat after me prayer. And all of you are the kids now, all right? Dear God, we give you thanks this morning for the great love that you have shown us in Jesus Christ, your son. As he prays for unity, help us to show this love to all those around us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So this sermon was supposed to be about unity. In fact, I had a really snazzy title already picked out from this gospel reading today when Jesus says that they may be one. Because you see, this sermon was supposed to be about what, what Jesus prays about in the gospel reading from John today when he asks God to make his followers one, both the followers he has then, these around me, as he says, but, but also those who will follow him, their, him because of them, which is us, right? The disciples that are yet to come. I was going to tell you that Christians today have made many strides in reaching this kind of unity, or at least a semblance of unity through organizations like 
the Church Council, World Council of Churches or the Lutheran World Federation. I was going to tell you that our own denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, has formal partnership agreements with six other denominations and that the ELCA is about as ecumenically minded as it gets. I was going to point to the increasing partnership between Roman Catholics and Lutherans. And I was going to show you pictures from my visit to the Vatican in Rome six years ago when I was privileged to be part of an ecumenical delegation from Baltimore that went to Rome to meet the Pope and to talk about Christian unity. And then the shooting at Raab Elementary School in Uvalde happened. And everything changed. All of a sudden, my beautiful sermon on unity with the exalted title of that all may be one became a sermon in search of a title. I say this because ever since this horrific event, I've been struggling how to preach today, what to say in the wake of this heartbreaking shooting, an 18-year-old who is really a child himself killing 19 innocent students, children, and two of their teachers with an assault rifle that he had bought legally the day after he turned 18. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what to say. I don't know what to preach, words fail me. All I feel is grief and anguish. I know a preacher's job is to proclaim love and to give hope, even in the midst of the most traumatic happenings. But how do you preach hope when you feel so hopeless yourself? I am grieving and I am anguished and I am shocked. Actually, on second thought, I'm not shocked. Mass shootings are par for the course in this country, and you can almost predict when the next one is going to happen. Since the beginning of this year alone, there have been 220 mass shootings. The FBI defines a mass shooting as one where three or more people are shot. 220 of those in 149 days. You do the math. It's way more than a daily occurrence. That's true for school shootings, too, between 2013 and 2019, when most school systems shut down because of COVID, there were 549 school shootings in this country. Each day, 12 children die from gun violence, according to Sandy Hook Promise, a nonprofit started by the parents of students killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut. 11 years ago. Another 32 are shot and injured day, day by day. So I'm not shocked that these things keep happening. I am shocked that our society seems to accept these crimes as though they were inevitable, as though there was nothing we could do about it. And I'm angry at those who keep sending thoughts and prayers instead of taking concrete actions. I don't know about you, but I am angry that our leaders seem unable or unwilling to do anything about this. I am angry because politicians on the right and on the left use these tragic events for their own purposes, to advance their own preconceived notion, to sanctimoniously offer their thoughts and prayers on Fox News and MSNBC. I don't want thoughts and prayers. We don't need any more thoughts and prayers. We need action. On one channel, all you hear is how, oh, guns are not the problem, right? And the National Rifle Association is meeting in Texas as we speak and making that point again. Guns are not the problem, it's the shooters. There's a mental health system that has failed in potentially uh, identifying a disturbed individuals. On the other channel, it's all about gun control and how the other side keeps blocking sensible gun laws. Everyone just keeps promoting their own agenda and nothing ever changes. I don't know about you, but that makes me angry. 
I can readily agree that our mental health system needs reform. Yes, it does. I can readily agree that access to counseling and mental health services need to be strengthened. Yes, sir. You might even convince me, maybe, that it is a good idea to improve security at educational institutions, to harden the schools, which is the new euphemism for putting armed security guards in the schools. But we need sensible gun laws, too. 90% of Americans, according to polls, agree that there ought to be some kind of background check when it comes to purchasing firearms. 60% of Americans are in favor of restricting the sale of assault weapons, like the semi-automatic semi rifle that the Uvalde shooter, his name was Salvador Ramos, bought the day after his 18th birthday, as soon as it was legal, without any background check whatsoever. Yet nothing happens. No laws are ever passed. The gridlock in Washington grinds on, grinds on and in the in individual states, if anything, gun laws have become weaker in recent years, not stronger. In America today, there are more guns than people. Did you know that for every 100 Americans, there are 120 firearms? Did you know that gun violence is the leading cause of death among American children and teens? Did you know that black youth are four times more likely to be killed with guns than their white peers? That's why our church, the ELCA, all the way back in 1993, called for passage and strict enforcement of legislation that would regulate the sale of guns, based on the biblical exhortation that we are to love one another and strive to live in peace and harmony and keep each other safe, for crying out loud. It's that basic. On Tuesday, after this latest tragedy, our church reaffirmed this day in saying in a statement, we reaffirm our commitment in calling for greater gun safety, including preventing easy access to assault-style weapons, and strengthening our federal system of background checks for all gun sales. As people of faith, we hold on to our belief in caring for our neighbors and striving for justice and peace in all the world. Even the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Chicago, by no means a flaming liberal, said after the Texas shooting, the Second Amendment did not come down from Sinai. The right to bear arms will never be more important than human life. Our children have rights too, and our elected officials have a moral duty to protect them. So on this Memorial Day weekend, as we give thanks for those who gave their lives to make this country free and safe and great, the questions we have to ask ourselves are these. What kind of country are we? What kind of society do we want to be? How much carnage are we willing to take? When will we stop to argue over the false dichotomy between gun rights and our children's right to live without fear? Beyond politics, what are our, our moral, our ethical obligations toward our children and toward our fellow citizens? Because in the end, my siblings in Christ, in the end, it's all about our children. Above the noise of the debate that now rages once more, let's not forget the children who died in this senseless tragedy because an 18-year-old child was allowed to purchase an assault weapon. So I want to end by reading the names of the victims of the 19 elementary school children and the two teachers that gave their lives trying to protect them. Just last Sunday when Pastor Nikia was preaching, maybe you were here or watched it online, she did the same thing. She showed pictures and she gave brief bios of the 10 people who had been gunned down in a supermarket in Buffalo the week before. 
So just a week later, we need to do this again, as hard as it may be. And, and my heart breaks to think that beyond their names and their ages, I really cannot tell you much more about these young victims. There is no bios for them. They haven't had a chance to live yet. Their whole lives were still ahead of them. Please pray with me for the victims of the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Osia Garcia, who was eight or nine, and he was the sweetest little boy that I've ever known, his grandfather said. Jose Flores, 10, who loved baseball and loved going to school, his uncle told the Washington Post. He'd received an honor roll award hours before the shooting. Amory Joe Gausa, 10, died trying to call the police. She also had won an honor roll award earlier that day. Xavier Javier Lopez, 10, liked sports, art class, and hamming it up for the camera. <laughs> his mother said he was funny, never serious, and his smile, that smile I will never forget. Levi Bravo, 10, was in fourth grade. Alithia Ramirez, also 10, she loved to draw. She wanted to be an artist when she grew up. Tess Marie Mata, 10, had a contagious laugh, said her sister, adding that the two played softball together. Alexandria Ania Rubio, 10, was beautiful and smart. Her mother wrote in a Facebook tribute, hours before the shooting, Alexandria received a Good Citizen Award. Leila Salazar, 10, used to sing along to Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses on the way to school, her father told the Associated Press. McKenna Lee Elrod, 10, was found dead in her classroom. Her older sister confirmed on Twitter and said, my sweet, innocent baby sister, my heart will forever break for you my love. Jace Luevanos, 10, was killed along with his cousin and classmate, Jaila Silguro. Jaila Nicole Silguro was 11. She was a delighted, energetic, lovely little girl who enjoyed making TikToks, according to a GoFundMe page her family friend made to cover her funeral expenses. Eliana Eli Garcia was nine. She was the second eldest of five girls. She wanted to be a teacher, loved the film Encanto, and dreamt of wearing a purple dress to her quinceanera, her 15th birthday, six years hence. Eliana Cruz Torres was also killed in the massacre, her family confirmed. Annabel Guadalupe Rodriguez, also 10, was a third grader. She was in the same classroom as her cousin, Jacqueline Caceres, when the shooter came in. Jacqueline Jesse Casares, 10, was in fourth grade. Maite Juliana Rodriguez, 10, was a sweet, smart little girl. Her family member wrote in a GoFundMe for her funeral expenses. Rogelio Torres was 10, and he was among Tuesday's victims as well. Miranda Mathis, 11, attended Raab Elementary with her brother who survived the shooting. Eva Mireles was 44. She was the fourth grade teacher at Raab and reportedly she helped her students climb out the window before Ramos shot her. Shot her. And Irma Garcia, Mireles' co-teacher, 
She had taught at Raab Elementary for 23 years and had four kids. In a sad twist of fate, Irma's husband, Joe Garcia, died of a heart attack two days after the massacre. Siblings in Christ, in these days of anguish and grief, as we pray for the families of the victims, it's important to remember that we do not preach a theology of glory. We do not follow a God who makes everything all right all the time and gives you a worry-free life. We do not preach a prosperity gospel. We do not worship a God who makes you rich if only you follow all the rules. We preach a theology of the cross because we worship a God who decides to throw his lot in with humanity to leave whatever he heaven he inhabits and get his hands dirty, joining us in the midst of our human misery. A God who shows up. A God who shows up even and especially when we are hurting, when we are in pain, when we are grieving, when we are dying. A God who shows up in a fourth grade classroom in Uvalde, Texas who shows up in a supermarket in Buffalo, who shows up in a hair salon in California, a God who ends up on a cross, the very symbol of death, and turns that cross into life for us. So knowing that God loves us in all of our messiness and all of our grief and anguish today, let us pray. Gracious God, news of the mass shooting at Raab Elementary School has ripped our hearts and torn our souls. We are walking through the valley of the shadow of death in light of the horrific gun violence we are witnessing once more. In the depth of our anger and pain, we come before you, the God of peace, our rock and our refuge. You are our only comfort. You are our only source of hope. Merciful God, comfort us in our grief. Then push us into action to keep our children safe. Comfort the families of the victims of Uvalde and give us courage to stand up and demand change, to stand up and demand change that will make our country and our schools safer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say, Amen. Would you stand with me as we now sing a song of hope and a song of life? Alleluia. Sing to Jesus. It's number 392.
this time, if you are at home and you have any prayer requests that you'd like lifted up here at the altar, please put them in the chat now. Also, if you're participating in the Holy Communion, get your bread and your wine or grape juice ready as we enter our communion liturgy. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity, sin, and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, Make your people one as you and your son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, by depression, or constant worry or pain. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayer. Today, as we remember all who have died in service to this country, we ask your healing hand upon us that we might affirm and celebrate the gifts of everyone who calls this nation home. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. Especially today, Lord, we pray for Anne as she recovers from surgery. We pray for Dick also recovering, for Catherine, for Marsha. We pray for Jeff, the Allred family, for another Jeff, for Gregory, for Barbara. We continue to lift up Ken and Carl, Betty and George, Wayne, Susan, Steve, Samuel, Emily, Stephen, Anne, Jim and Catherine, Roger, Earl and Julia, Tyler, Beverly's grandson. We pray for Claire, for Grant, for Peggy and Marla and Keith, and we remember our homebound members and those from this congregation who serve in the military. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Who else do the people of God pray for this morning? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. It's offering time, and we are being blessed today with a presentation from our bell choir, the King's Ringers. So as the offering plates go around, please enjoy.
What a beautiful. Thank you, King Fringus. Thank you. And thank you also to all of those who uh, keep supporting God's mission. Uh, please stand with us as we give thanks for God's many blessings, out of which we uh, give our tithes and offerings to support the mission of the church. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. For the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim on, on, in heaven, with our bell choir and our chancel choir and our organ, we praise your name and we join your unending hymn singing. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people of every time and every place for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. And as we remember Jesus, let's raise our hands in prayer to God and gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat as we get ready for the distribution of Holy Communion. Um, the most important thing to know about it is that this is food for all people. There's no requirement. You don't have to be a Lutheran or a member of this church or anything to participate. All are welcome. No exception. Uh, Sarah and I will give you a waiver into your outstretched hand, and then you are invited to dip it into the cup. The larger compartment is wine. The smaller one is grape juice. And if you need uh, gluten-free, just ask. We have that available 
as well. If you're participating at home, uh, please say to one another, and if you are by yourself, hear me now say to you, this is the, uh, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come, all is ready. I do need two volunteers to do the cup, if I could have a couple. Thank you. Whoever makes it the fastest, there you go. <laughs> thank you. If you would be over there, thanks so much. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> go. This is the body of Christ given for you. 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 This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Andy, the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Janet, this, oh, this is the body of Christ Janet, given for you. Yes. The body of Christ Janet given for you. Steve, the body of Christ given for you. Talon, this is the body of Christ given for you. Oh, Louise is back. Louise, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Denise, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ only given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Mary, the body of Christ given for you. Bill, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ Jim, given for you. Oh, 
Please stand for the table blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat for another minute. It's time for our big three announcements, but before we run them, I would like those of you who are veterans to stand because it is Memorial Day weekend and we want to give thanks to you and honor you and bless you with a prayer. So would you stand if you're a veteran? And the rest of you, if you would raise your right hand and, uh, you know, have any veterans in the choir, don't be shy and raise your right hand and let's bless these people and give them thanks for their service. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the veterans who gave of their time and of their talent and of their life so that we could be safe. Thank you for their service, Lord. Protect them and be with them and bless them always. We give thanks for them on this Memorial Day weekend, and we thank you, Lord, for giving them to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your service. And now the three big announcements. Enjoy. Good morning, CTK. I'm Mike Harris, Minister of Traditional Music, and these are your big three announcements. Next week is Pentecost. Pentecost commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit like fiery tongues on the apostles and followers of Jesus. So wear something red and join us for a special joint outdoor service at 11 a.m., followed by a picnic and kickoff. Chef Chris will cook a meal for us to share and you can enjoy some howling cow ice cream. Don't forget to bring a chair. Habitat for Humanity House that was built by volunteers from Lutheran churches in the area was dedicated last Sunday in Apex and the new homeowners are settling in. We appreciate everyone who came out and supported this project over the last year. It is always fun to work side by side with other area churches. A special thank you to Bill and Rosemary Pate for being our liaisons to both the Lutheran Coalition and Habitat. Stay tuned for information on our next build. In light of the pending Supreme Court decision on abortion, we are planning an adult forum to understand where we as Lutheran Christians stand on this issue. We will review the ELCA social statement on abortion from 1991 and listen to the views of participants. The forum will be held June 12th, 19th and 26th at 9.50 a.m. in West Fellowship and via Zoom. And as a bonus, next Sunday we will be starting a special series of training sessions on worship hospitality. It takes lots of dedicated volunteers to make our worship services the welcoming events they are. Greeters, ushers, readers, assisting ministers, acolytes, there's a role to play whatever your age. Join Heidi Klein, our Disciple Engagement Coordinator, and our pastors on the first Sunday of each month at 9.50 a.m. in the sanctuary to learn more and to discern how God is calling you to serve in worship. It starts June 5th and all are welcome, adults and children alike. See you there. For more information about these events or any other CTK ministries, Check us out on Church Center and on our website, ctkcarry.com. These have been your announcements. CTK is on the move. Now let's continue to learn, live, and tell the story of God's grace. You got it? You can use one of those too? No bloopers? No, I don't want bloopers. So he does more than just play the organ, huh, Mr. Mike? Great shirt, by the way. Can we stand and ask for a blessing from a God who loves us? People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. 
The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. What you got, got for us going out? 855. 855. Crown him with many crowns. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace to learn, live, and tell the story of God's grace. Thanks be to God.